subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. I'm with Mr. Najib Jang, the former uh, Lieutenant Governor of Delhi and also the former Vice Chancellor of Jamia Millia Islamia University. Mr. Jang recently joined the protesters, the students at Jamia University on Sunday. We're here to talk to him about the ongoing protests in connection with the Citizenship Amendment Act. Welcome to the Prince, sir. Uh, my first question to you will be uh, you joining the protest, you know, joining the students at Jamia. Uh, also, in, in some of the media statements, you said that the Citizenship Amendment Act should uh, not only be about uh, some religions, either it should include all religions or it should exclude all religions. So, what do you have to say about it? Uh, first, uh, on your f the, the first part of your question, yes, I did go to Jamia. Uh, I have been a uh, former vice chancellor there and I think I needed uh, to give support, emotional support to my former students. Uh, they are there with great enthusiasm, they are, they are hurt, they are hurt emotionally after the 15th December evening incident and so uh, I thought that uh, I should go and at least give them some emotional support. On the CAA I believe that uh, the protests have gone on long enough and we need to remedy the situation. And so what I offered was that uh, make it all inclusive or exclude the religions. And that also, to my mind, is as per uh, the, the enunciation of the, of the uh, Constitution of India. Because uh, I believe that article, under Article 14, you can't differentiate between religions when you talk of citizenship. So it's an easy solution I, I gave mm. and that would easily also include the other people left out. For instance, the Tamils of mm. uh, Sri Lanka, mm. uh, you have uh, Hindus coming, wanting to come in from Nepal, if they do. Mm. In any case, this limits yourself to 2014. So those people are already here. Sir, uh, you have been the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi. Uh, so what do you have to say about the law and order situation like you, you mentioned in some of, you know, when you went to Jamia that the protests have been going on for a long time and it's also affecting the daily lives of people. But on the other hand, people have a right to protest when something big, this big happens. So, so what do you have to say about that? No, I think that the protests have gone long enough. They are disturbing the life of common citizens in India. However, the protesters have their own point of view because they believe, look, please understand that this is not about excluding anybody from nationality. Mm. The government is absolutely right. Mm. This is only about giving nationality. Mm. It's not about excluding anyone. Yeah. To that end, it's fine. Mm. But the protest is not on exclusion. Mm. The protest is about uh, the constitution not being followed. Mm. So I think that this has gone long enough. Mm. Uh, somebody should intervene. Mm. I suggested that there should be uh, a, a public press conference by the Honorable Prime Minister or the Home Minister so or somebody should call uh, groups of protesters and speak to them. We are fortunate that this is not a political mm. camp, uh, protest. Political parties have been kept out mm. of this by these people and they should be. Mm. We are also lucky that the nature of the protests remains secular. Mm -hmm. For instance, I mean, I agree that a larger number of protesters there are Muslims, yeah. but there are a large number of others also. Mm. So it is important mm. to, and I said that at Jamia, to keep the mullahs out, to keep the malvis out, mm -hmm. the granthis out, etc. Mm -hmm. And keep this within the gambit of secular India. And the students are very keen and they are very mm. clear that they shall remain a secular movement. Mm. But sir, uh, coming to my question, another question which is related to, to it, do you think there is enough awareness about what the Citizenship Amendment Act uh, has in store? Uh, because uh, like you said, it's looking like a protest where only Muslims are participating. Also, when you talk from a platform of Jamia, which has a lot of uh, students who are Muslims, do you think uh, the other people are not joining because there isn't enough awareness or like you said the government should reach out no I didn't say that others are not joining I said that a lot of others are joining number one number two we must be clear that Jamia may be a Muslim name hmm. but about 46% of its students are non-Muslims 
So Jamia is not a classical Muslim university. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Jamia, you will see a large, large number of non-Muslims uh, students mm -hmm. there. So that's, that's, that's one. The big advantage that I see in the CAA is that it has made citizens of India aware of the Constitution. Okay. For the first time, we see everyone holding a copy of the Constitution and mm -hmm. reading their preamble mm -hmm. or reading their fundamental rights or learning about Article 14 or 21 or 31 and so on. Mm -hmm. So, people are today much more aware of the Constitution. Okay. And if you look at the overall nature of these protests, mm -hmm. Like I said, while a majority of the protesters might be Muslims or are Muslims, mm -hmm. there are a whole lot of people mm -hmm. who are non-Muslims and therefore they are keeping this, this entire movement. Mm -hmm. It has become a movement really, it's not a protest anymore because mm -hmm. you look anywhere in the country, you have Assam, you have Delhi, you have Patna, you have Lucknow, you have Calcutta, mm -hmm. you have Tamil Nadu, mm -hmm. parts, large parts of Tamil Nadu, mm -hmm. large parts of uh, Karnataka, mm -hmm. Kerala, mm -hmm. Maharashtra. So you name it and, and the movement is on. Mm -hmm. So my another question to you will be about, you know, you as a former Vice Chancellor of Jamia, when you went to the university uh, and you saw students coming out in large numbers and protesting and the, uh, for the last uh, five years, I would say before that, even before that, ever since Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister, students have become the opposition in the country. So, what do you have to say about the role of students, uh, active role of students in the, you know, being in opposition or an active voice? No, I don't think that the students are in opposition. That would be too strong a statement to make. This is what I the, think a lot of students are aggrieved and there are different uh, reasons for this. Hmm. I think that students are extremely concerned hmm. on the employment matter. Okay. I met a whole lot of students in Jamia. Uh, also in Delhi University. You know, in my time, we used to do an MA and look for a job. Hmm. These days, they are doing PhDs hmm. because jobs are not available if and you are an MA. And still not getting jobs. And, not and you do a PhD for four or five years. Hmm. The reason for that PhD is not so much to gain education, hmm. but to keep yourself gainfully employed. Hmm. So that's one thing that is worrying students a great, great deal. Hmm. The ambition of students is there. You have so much development. You have TV, you have cars. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to get on in life. Mm -hmm. And it's an opportunity that they feel is being denied to them mm -hmm. uh, at the moment by lack of employment opportunities or the slowing down uh, of the economy. Mm -hmm. And that's one concern. Mm -hmm. This leads to other things. And I think uh, the, the fire came when uh, Rohit Vemula mm -hmm. uh, committed suicide. I mean, the reason was very simple. He was being denied his scholarship. Mm. So here is a Dalit child mm. who has come from, you know, the, uh, from the salt of Mother Earth mm. in, in, deep Karna, in deep Andhra Pradesh. Mm. And he is denied, uh, he's denied his scholarship. Mm. And the child writes an emotional letter mm. and commits suicide. Mm. That really upset a whole lot of students. Okay. These incidents, unfortunately, have sparked off after mm. the 15 December incident in Jamia when the children were uh, badly beaten. Yeah. And, and we have not following. seen we have not seen such mm. uh, incidents in uh, in Jamia before. Mm. No, before JNU, it happened in Aligarh, where yeah. there was very merciless beating by the police. And then shortly afterward, mm. the JNU incident. Yeah. So you see the concern of the student and you must understand then does not remain limited to CAA and NRC. Mm. It also remains, uh, it's also focused on his own position. Mm. Where do I stand in this country? Mm. You're not offering me a job. Yeah. You're disciplining me or trying to discipline me in a very brutal manner. Yeah, a JNU young boy or a girl shall not accept this. Mm. Because the JNU students were protesting for a completely different thing. Yes, for the yes. Hike that is right. And the hostel charges. So my last question would uh, to you would be about the upcoming Delhi elections, since uh, you know when you were the LG, you were seen as a you know a op opponent like uh, you to Kejriwal, and uh, now that you've seen his work uh, from a distance, also being in the system, what do you have to say about Kejriwal's work? Look, let me first disabuse you about this perceived conflict that I'm supposed to have with Arvind. Sure. Uh, a I think our differences were on constitutional issues. Mm -hmm. 
his understanding of constitutional issues were different from mine. And to that extent, they remained and we disagreed. Uh, at a personal level, we maintained an extremely cordial relationship. I think, and I've said this before, that uh, Arvind has his heart in the right place. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt that he had a strong desire uh, to change the structure. Mm -hmm. The problem came that perhaps in his hurry, he could not uh, take his civil servants along with him. So that was his hurry and there was the natural resistance which comes from bureaucratic procedures. Mm -hmm. Over the last one year, two years, I think that's been sorted out. Okay. Uh, after that very nasty incident with the chief secretary, uh, I think things have eased up. So you think and he's a much better administrator now? I think he's a maturer man. Okay. And uh, Delhi has been much better administered in the last two years. So you think there's a chance of AAP uh, coming back and Look, being the CM again? It would not be fair of me to comment at election season because it can be perceived sure. uh, either way. Yeah. So we'll leave it at that. No problem. Thank you so much for speaking with us, sir. Thank you. For The Print, this is Kritika Sharma. Please keep following our YouTube channel for more such interviews and videos. Thank you.